Keith Dixon, the accident investigator, has got access to a survey vessel for one day and has returned to the site of the M1. This time there are no divers on board, just a remote operated vehicle. For detailed survey work, the ROV is essential because it can stay down for hours, sending live video pictures back to the boat. In the control room, an operator directs its every movement, providing Keith with the close-up forensic evidence he needs. A smaller ROV detaches itself from the main unit and begins its work, slowly exploring the wreck. Re-examining the hull, they see something the divers missed, a V-shaped gash. This hasn't been caused by corrosion, but by impact with a sharp object, perhaps the bow of the SS Vidar. It looks like an angle of about um, 70, 75, 80 degrees, I'd say. About a 30 degree indentation. Yeah. The gash is further evidence of a collision, but it wouldn't have been enough to sink her. There's still no sign of a hole in the inner pressure hull. Well, I'll take a detailed look at the gun bay now, I suppose. Hmm. You're on the starboard side now, right? Yeah, we're just uh, holding I think we're there. hopping. Oh, oh. What can we see down there? Finally. The discovery they've been waiting for. The mounting ring doesn't sit on top of the pressure hull as they thought, but passes right through. Yeah, maybe the King Post did go into the pressure hull. Looks like some piping. Yes. Once the gun had been knocked off, water would have shot down through this hole and flooded the central part of the submarine. But that would be flooding into the magazine area. Or the shell room, as they call it, yes. And then fore and after that magazine, you've got watertight bulkheads and doors. But we, uh, we don't know if they were open or closed. Keith is the first person in 74 years to look directly into the heart of the M1. But he won't go further, as the wreck is a war grave. <laughs>